Hello everyone, it's Charlton. All right, so the uh, the large group that is migrating from Honduras to the United States southern border, 4,000 strong by now. Um, I don't exactly, I don't know what country they're in. I know you have Honduras, they're starting there. El Salvador, I think Guatemala is another. Mexico. And then uh, the United States, I still think they're about a thousand miles away from the southern border. And the president has been tweeting and calling for them to be intercepted by the countries that they're passing through, obviously. And he's threatening to cut off aid or even, uh, you know, scuttle the uh, the recent trade deals that they signed with Mexico. You know, and Mexico is taking those threats pretty seriously because they've intervened at, at certain por parts, I think. There's video of, you know, the two planes on the tarmac of federal agents, of I think federal, Mexican federal agents to intercept them. There's video here, and this is kind of why I'm making this video, of, uh, of, of one of the leaders, I think one of the main leaders who organized this march and organized the previous march earlier in the summer, the one that made it all the way there, being, being arrested, you know. And um, that's just that's just tactical, you know. Take out the leader, and uh, and people, you know, people need leaders, you know, to organize, for 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 to to give them hope, to keep it alive, to make it grow. So you take out the leader, and that has a big impact, big impact. So I think they're doing a variety of things, you know. I saw over here that um, it says the White House. Let me show you some of these pictures, and and then so let me just because I want to close out this Daily Mail thing. I mean, it's it's just crazy how it just locks everything else up. But you get an idea of how big it is. I think that's at uh, that's at Guatemala, Mexico. I guess there's a river that separates one a portion of their border. That is the leader who was just arrested, you know, and there's video of him being pushed into a van, you know, forcefully, and he resists because he knows, he knows he's being taken away, and uh, both, both for the movement or whatever it's called, the, you know, um, I forget, forget what they're even calling that, you know, there's a word for that, the migrants, the caravan, I guess, I, I don't know, my memory's shot, shot, man, so I'll show you that in a second. But that's the dude right there. His name is um, Mujica, Irenio, Irenio Mujica. I don't know what nationality he is, but this began, I don't know if he's Mexican or what. The director of the organization Pueblo Sin Fronteras was detained at a march supporting new giant caravan of migrants headed to the U.S., here he is pictured during a protest outside the U.S. Embassy in Mexico City on April 12th. So I think he's Mexican. And um, there's also the video of them on the tarmac. If I can get that quickly, I'll show you that. That's it too, but I don't feel like going through the hassle of that one. There was one that was already put in there with the Twitter feed. Actually, you know what? I think it's on the uh, USA Today. It is. So supposedly the uh, the White House is supporting the UN is trying to intervene and work with Mexican authorities and actually the White House is supporting that effort you know or at least at least temporarily you know in the meantime until they until they get closer which I, and what that effort is is not exactly clear to me it sounds like they're just trying to intervene and find out you know where they are right now before they get here uh, who are legitimate refugees and deal with them, and then whoever are not repatriate them back to their home countries. You know, but to do it, do it now and do it where they are. That seems to be the effort. And where, uh, where the ones that are, um, where the ones that are are legitimate refugees go, what they're going to do with them is is not clear to me either. Whether they go or stay in the country that they're in, where where the, where they're met by the UN, or whether they'll be, you know allowed to continue on to the United States. That's not clear. The law is, the law is that you're technically supposed to go to the most, you know, the next neighboring country and seek asylum in the next neighboring country. That's why, you know, that, that point has been brought up, you know, that they're just, they're just making a beamline for the United States and so forth, you know. 
I mean, I listen. I, 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 I don't have a huge bone in this fight. I like Trump tons. You know, I generally support the effort. You know, uh, for the most part, but it doesn't affect me that much. But I understand. Uh, you know, a lot of working class folks that are affected by it, okay, and that have been told for, for so long to just shut up and stop complaining. Why, cause, and who benefits from, you know, a flood of, of immigration? Because it's just, it's low wage labor, labor man. It's, it's huge corporations. It's the 1%, man. That's who percent benefits from it more than anybody else. And, 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 and the immigrant, you know, obviously. But even the immigrants that are here, if it just continues to flood, their jobs will be taken, even the ones that are here illegally. And I honestly think that there's a significant portion. There's some, People are smart, just people. People are people. Whoever you are, whether you're Hispanic or whatever you consider yourself, you know, they understand, you know, that that can, that'll affect my job. You know, even if I'm uh, uh, um, a low-wage a low wage worker, Laborer, eventually, there'll be enough that it'll just take, it'll bring down their wages or just take their job. So, I don't know. Anyways, here's, uh, what, what is the, let me show you the, the tarmac video. I promise, uh, the best video is the guy getting shoved in the van. I mean, nobody gets hurt, but you can see that that is the intent of that visit, without any doubt, you know. So it says migrant caravan, two federal police filled planes with anti-riot gear landed in Landed near Mexico Guatemala border this morning, um, and this is from the 17th. Today is the 19th, right? So this is from like two days ago. It's a little old, but just to show you, keep you up to speed. And again, it says, you know. Um, Trump administration supports Mexico UN plan to deal with caravan of migrants. Uh, Trump Trump administration on Thursday night welcomed Mexican government plan to work with the United Nations Refugee Agency to deal with a uh, controversial caravan of mostly Honduran migrants fleeing poverty and violence before they can make their way to the U.S. Mexico border. The caravan of migrants who number anywhere between fifteen hundred and fourteen four thousand has angered President Donald Trump. A top Mexican official said Thursday night that, that his government will ask the UN High Commissioner for Refugees to help identify legitimate asylum claims from the migrants who are part of the caravan making its way through his country's southern border and route to the United States. Under the Mexican government's plan, those migrants whose asylum claims get rejected would be immediately repatriated to Honduras and other countries. Uh, the Mexican ambassador in the U.S. told Fox News. We want to make sure that those claims are legitimate, he said, noting a handful of migrants had already s applied for asylum in Mexico. We obviously are sensitive to the humanitarian situation that we encounter. Mexico is in favor of legal, safe, and orderly migration. Secretary of State Mike, Mike, Pomp Mike Pompeo, who is visiting Mexico on Friday, applauded the move by Mexican government officials. We welcome the government's Mexico... The government of Mexico's statement that they will seek cooperation with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees to address immigration issues in the region, including the influx of people arriving in Mexico, he said in a statement. The United States stands ready to assist the government of Mexico and the UNHRC, HCR, in this effort. Mexico's decision to seek U.N. assistance came following a barrage of tweets from Trump over the past few days in which he rallied against Democrats in Congress and the government of Mexico, Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala, threatening to cut you off USA to Central American countries and close the southern border. He's threatened to bring to the military to the border and so forth. So lastly, let me just show you this. And then I, uh, I mean, I have a thought on... Um, you know, it's funny, man. It's actually Beto O'Rourke who kind of convinced me. I don't really, it doesn't matter me to me so much to have the wall, but I, I certainly can understand people who live along the southern border who are, who are more in favor of it. And especially what we saw with the su this summer with, you know, the family separations, that sort of proved that they just can't handle it. They cannot handle the influx of people coming in during the summer months. They're coming in, you know, 30 and 40,000 you know, what, or at a time over each month, they literally do not have the personnel to stop it, period. You know, 
And uh, that's just a fact, dude. It's, you know, so you either are for letting them in or you're not. Um, you know, I'm for slowing things down, slowing things down. I, I, I don't think that's, that's extreme. You know, like we just could maybe just take a pause, slow things down and kind of uh, just back up a bit. So um, my wife's been affected by this. Her family has, not by the border. But you know, and they 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 got screwed totally, and not and they and they've been following the rules. They just got screwed by the travel travel ban flat out, you know. And and they're they're chain migration. They are. I have different feelings on chain migration. I mean, I, I understand the president's against it, and I can see how it's abused. It's abused. But at the same time, also, I'm just going to ramble here. But at the same time, it's actually it is a benefit to have family here. I mean, that, that makes people want to participate in the bet, you know, in, in, in improving the community because they're improving it for their own kids, for their own cousins, you know, and I understand it gets abused big time, but I'm just saying you're more, you're more willing to get behind the community and become part of the community. If your family is, is in that community, you know, for the schools, get them to go to college, work hard so that they, you know, they got, you know, they become a part of that and so forth. So let me let me show you here. He, you'll see it's hard to see. You got to watch, you know. And I'm probably going to play this once. So here we go. But you'll see him getting pushed in. I don't know if that's him right there. I don't think it is. It's somewhere. He, you'll see him. You'll see him getting shoved into the van. <laughs> right there. So about the wall, you know, and, I, and I'll tell you two, th you know, a point for and against the wall, you know, I certainly don't think like it's a symbol of hate or anything like that. I mean, I think that's silly, um, but, um, you know, it doesn't really uh, matter too much to me, but, you know, Beto O'Rourke, I saw him talking early in his campaign when he was still, you know, he was, he was being put on television because, you know, he's a nice looking guy and all that. And he kind of has this Kennedy-esque stuff to him, whatever. So, but um, he was talking about it and he's, he's, he's flat out against the, the wall. It's worse than that. He says there's no problem, basically, you know, and, um, but he was saying that, you know, that border crossings are at a minimum and all this other stuff. And he was saying that, that, um, you know, it's, 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 we're putting all this money at the border and there's, there's, there's a diminishing return. Okay. Meaning we're just getting less and less for the amount of money we're, we're putting to the problem. And actually in the way, in the manner the money's being spent, there's actually some truth to that. Cause I mean, there's basically, there's just so much that human personnel can do. It doesn't, you know, there's just so much area that border, a number of border agents can control. And it doesn't matter how many trucks you have and helicopters and, you know, what infrared technology and stuff, you know, um, it, it just, you keep spending more and more money and you're just not really uh, getting much in return for that. That's where the wall actually becomes to make a lot more sense. It does. That's where you get a big return for your money, you know, and it's a one-time cost that there's no doubt about it economically because, you know, you know, securing the border with technology, with human beings, with border patrol agents, more and more, that's something you have to pay on and on into infinity. It's like an annuity, man. But, but a wall obviously needs to pay me, me maintain. It's a big cost, which is nothing to our budget. Nothing. It's an absolute, they, they waste that in, a, in, in a couple weeks in Washington. But um, you actually get your return on your money. You're getting a, a big, you know, immediately, right away, you get this giant, you know, result from the money that's spent. So thank you, Beto O'Rourke. The thing I, the thing I actually have to worry about it, the thing that bothers me about the wall, and nobody's saying this, is how I actually, I mean, I don't like the idea of being, you know, walled in. 
You know, like one day, you just never know, and people think that's fanatical, but things change, man. I mean, it's like the uh, the Maggio line or whatever. It's it's not the Maggio line in France, you know, when they they used, they built that to protect them from Germans and so they didn't have to go because of World War II and they never wanted to have another world war. But the Germans, you know, uh, broke it, you know, and then they then they took it themselves and used it, used it against, uh, you know, invading forces in the other direction. But what I'm saying is we could be we could be trapped in just like in, in Germany, is it, um, in East Germany. You know, that that gives me uh, that gives me the concern more than the other way around. All right. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching my video. Sorry for the sunlight. Please subscribe to my channel. Give me a like down below. I'll see you in the next video. Later, man.